Hey guys, Joel back here once again with some OCR FSMQ uh, additional mathematics uh, for pupils who took their GCSE in year 10 in maths and going or year star probably, but uh, yeah, uh, lesson 2 today of, of my course which is uh, the fact and remainder theorem. So learn object of today is to understand the application of the remainder and factor theorem. So just a little note before we start is that with cubic substitution negatives always square to be positive. Everything on this earth squares to be positive. There's nothing that squares to be nev negative. But um, negatives cube to be negative again so it kind of flip flops with the odd and even powers. If you uh, ever power something to an even number it'll be positive but um, with negative it'll you know with with a with an odd power it'll keep its um, keep its sign so that's just something interesting to note uh, powers are calculated first and then multiplied so uh, we'll ha do a couple of examples of what I mean by that so if f of x uh, which is just a function um, of x equals x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4x plus 1 then work out the f of uh, minus 4 so all that means to me is replace every x I see with a minus 4 so uh, the first x we see is x cubed so we'll replace that with a minus 4 cubed so that'll be minus 64 because remember negatives cubed to be negative so it stays negative and then this is what I was talking about before uh, we'll replace the x with a minus 4 and then square it, which will be 16, and then we we'll times it by minus 2, so we'll actually turn back negative again, because we always calculate the power first and then multiply it after. So don't get confused with that. It's not uh, 2 times minus 4 and then squared that, because that, that would obviously give you uh, twice too big, and it would also give you uh, a positive answer, which is not what we want, because in fact it's negative. So, uh, so similar with this one, we'll replace the x with a minus 4, and it'll be minus 4 times minus 4, which is plus 16, and with plus the 1, it's got no x attached to it, and then you tidy up and you end up with minus 79. So that's that. But with this one, uh, 7 stays alone because there's... Uh, no x attached to it. We're replacing every x with a minus 2 this time, by the way. That's just minus 4. 2 times minus 2, minus 4. This one's uh, back to the interesting stuff. Uh, the, square the x first, so it'll be minus 2 squared, which is 4, and then times that by minus 3, which is minus 12. And then the uh, cubic, remember negatives uh, cubed to be negative, so minus 2 cubed is minus 8, but it's already minus uh, with that minus, so it's a double negative, so it's actually plus 8, because it's minus minus 8, which is plus 8. And that equals minus 1, apparently. And the same with this one. I'll, I'll put it up, uh, have a quick look over it. It's a minus 5, so uh, minus 5 uh, cubes to be negative 125. Uh, minus 5 squares to be 25, but it's times by minus 4, so it's minus 100. Uh, minus 5 times minus 5 is 25. And we'll just leave the 11 untouched. So that's that. Uh, in the last lesson, um, lesson one, it was dividing polynomials. So uh, that's on the screen there. Uh, have a quick look at it. It was uh, in the last lesson, I think. Uh, it might not have been, actually. It might be a totally different question. I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, uh, we've got our answer and our remainder there. And uh, that's how we divided that. And uh, there's a link to lesson one, probably down below in the description. Not entirely sure about that, but today we're talking about the remainder theorem. So the remainder theorem states that if you put um, the solution to, to f of x through, so if if I'm given a, a solution of x plus 3, then I'll put minus 3 through. Just like when you're solving a quadratic, if you get x plus 3, then x must equal minus 3. So we put a minus 3 through, like that. And it also equals minus 52 uh, when all is said and done. So minus 3 cubed is minus 27, plus 7 minus 3s, which is minus another 21. So we're now at minus 48, and then minus another 4, which is 52. So there you go. I wasn't lying to you. And that is the same as if you did the whole messy algebraic division, which takes forever. Uh, well, it doesn't take forever, but, you know, it's more long-winded than putting a number through a function. So that is not a coincidence, that is in fact the factor, uh, the remainder theorem. 
So the real benefit of the remainder theorem is uh, when you pose with a problem like this. Uh, what is the remainder when x cubed minus 3x squared plus 7x minus 5 is divided by x plus 3? Now I could go through the big long division process and find the number at the bottom. But who can be bothered for that, really, uh, when, when there's a much easier way? You'll do this every time. Uh, just put an x equals minus 3 through the cubic like we just did, and you get that. And apparently the, min the remainder is minus 80 when you put that through. Uh, but you'd get exactly the same answer if you wanted to do the long division, but usually the examiner will guide you towards using the, the, the remainder theorem or um, algebraic division. It might say use an algebraic method. and um, In that case, you would have to do the long division. Uh, and do another one there, uh, if it's divided by 2x minus 1, so that means we're going to put a half through, positive a half, because we've swapped the sign, remember. And uh, there you go, put a half through the cubic. Uh, so a half uh, plus a half minus 3 plus 1 equals minus 1. Now, 4, yeah, yeah, because a half, a half cubed is an eighth, and 4 eighths is, funnily enough, a half. Uh, and a uh, a half squared is a quarter, times two is a half, uh, minus uh, six halves, which is three, minus three, and add that one, and your remainder is minus Now, so, to check if something's a factor of something, you're really asking yourself, uh, is the remainder zero? And, well, yet again, you could go through the big long division process and find the number at the bottom, if it uh, equals zero but yet again I can't be bothered most people can't be bothered so we just pull minus through two through and see if it equals zero and uh, we'll replace all the X's with a minus two so minus two cubed is minus eight plus uh, two lots of minus two squared which is going to be eight uh, minus minus two which is going to be plus two and then minus the two so I think that equals zero and it does so it Therefore, x plus 2 is a factor. You would say that to the examiner. And he'd give you a big fat tick and say, well done. I'm sure he would actually say that. But there you go. Uh, there's another question. Check if that's a factor. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Just put a minus 5 through and see if it equals 0. So replace every x with a minus 5 and you get minus 5 cubed, which is minus 125, plus 5 lots of minus 5 squared, which is also 125 so uh, we're at 0 at the minute and then minus and lots of minus 5 which is going to be plus 50 and then minus 40 so I don't think this one equals 0 there you go minus 125 add 125 is 0 uh, plus 50 minus 40 and that is going to equal 10 or minus 10 I, th I think that should be a plus 10 yes that should be a plus 10 Apologies for that. Um, I'll just change that now. Uh, if we can get a pen, there we go. Pen. That should be a plus 10, I believe. Uh, correct us if I'm wrong down in the description below. Uh, not the description, the comment section. Descriptions for me. But yeah, uh, remainder should be plus 10. But either which way, it's not a factor because it doesn't equal 0. Uh, so you tell the examiner that. So, the uses of the fact down remainder theorem, well, a polynomial is given by f of x equals 2x uh, cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus 4. When f of x is divided by x plus 1, the remainder is 3, and when it's divided by x minus 1, the remainder is 1. So, find a and b. So, yeah, uh, I can't use my good old friend the long division, as I've got no unknowns in my polynomial. Um, that's That's the the main and only use of uh, fact and remainder theorem is to find unknown letters. Uh, obviously mathematicians are lazy and we want to do it in the fastest way possible and that's another reason but um, yeah this is the main reason to find generics in your cubic. So what we're going to do let's go with what we know. So we are told uh, that when this function uh, split your split your page in two by the way because we're given two pieces of information we're given that when f of x is divided by x minus one I might as well use the pen x minus one the remainder is three so we'll do this on the left hand side we'll put a minus one through because remember you swap the sign and set it all equal to three so replace every x with a minus one and you'll end up with two 
uh, minus 1s, which is minus 2, plus a, minus b, uh, plus 4 equals 3. S switcheroo the sides, and you'll end up with a minus b equals 1. Similarly, uh, we are also given the information that when it's divided by x minus 1, the remainder is 1. So, uh, we do the same again. We'll put a positive 1 through, because you swap the sign, and set it equal to 1. And you replace all the x's with a 1, and you end up with 2 plus a plus b plus 4 equals 1. So a plus b must equal minus 5. Now then, I have two equations with two unknowns. So this should be ringing alarm bells uh, from higher GCSE. I'm thinking simultaneous equations. So uh, there's were two equations, a minus b equals 1, and a plus b equals 5. Now I always love to match the middles, uh, have them the same uh, amount, so you know, lovely here because they're both one, um, uh, one lot of b. So I can basically just add these to get rid of the b, and you get 2a equals minus 4 because a add a is 2a, and 1 add minus 5 is minus 4. So your a must equal a minus 2, and that means would b must equal a minus 3 by putting that 2 back through any of these um, equations, so let's just show you I'm not lying, minus 2 minus b must equal 1, so if we bring him over the other side and move him there, um, we will get minus 2 uh, minus 1 equals b, so b must equal minus 3, so that is right. And there you go, there are your answers, and just to finish it off for the examiner, you replace your a and the b with the numbers you've found them out of b. So your final function is f of x equals 2x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. And that is that. A pretty short lesson today. It's a fairly straightforward topic. Uh, fact down remainder theorem, once you've been shown it, uh, obviously I may not have explained it the best. Um, but, but yeah, uh, leave your feedback down below. I'll answer any questions in the comments section. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, please leave a like rating uh, or dislike. You know, if you haven't liked it, please leave a dislike. And, uh, and tell us why in the comments, how I can improve these videos. Obviously, I'm not a qualified teacher. I'm, um, you know, I'm just teaching this course at my school and, uh, you know, using and adapting PowerPoints made by my maths teacher. And... Um, yeah, so, you know, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but, you know, I, I will help out in the comments section. Uh, good luck with the FSMQ, if this is the last video you watch before the exam, and uh, I'm sure you'll be fine. Just, just stay calm and go with what you know. Uh, hopefully, fact down remainder theorem comes up so you can smash that. Um, yeah, but uh, that's all for this video. In the next video, we will be doing the grading of a line. So uh, tune in for that if you're interested. And yeah, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.